Hi and welcome to the My Creative Life 2014 blog. Uh, this week we are talking about the Cricut. One of those die cut machines that a lot of us have. We have lots of cartridges. I'm not even going to share with you how many cartridges I've collected over the years. Uh, I will say at least that I got them all at a really good price. So. Uh, but then we seem not to use it very often. I must admit, while I said I would not buy the Cricut, I was actually there the first week it was released to buy one. Couldn't help myself. I, then that was the baby bug, the first one, the little one. Uh, since moved up to the Expression, then got a Gypsy. Now I have moved on to Craft Room, which I highly, highly recommend. Uh, and we're going to talk about that in a minute too. Uh, but I have always found the Cricut to be too cumbersome and too labor intensive to use on a regular basis. And I really wanted to try to solve that problem because of course like you we invest a lot of money in all these things and it drives me a little batty not to use it. Plus, because when, when you look at the cartridges, there's a lot of really nice cuts on there and you think, oh, well that would be fun or that would be fun. Or, But how do I incorporate it? Uh, into my daily crafting time when I don't have a lot of time for me to go and design an entire layout using different cuts from the Cricut on the computer and then use that for a scrapbook page or a card uh, would not be any fun to me. One, I don't really like to work on the computer because I in fact work on the computer so I don't want to be creative on the computer too. Uh, so every, every time I do that, I just it doesn't work well for me. Plus, I don't always have that much time, and so I talked a bit in the thread or in the post about pocket scrapbooking and how much I like that because I get to do small little pieces versus a whole page. So sometimes I just literally don't have the time to sit down, and fire up the Cricut, and because inevitably every time I open Craft Room, there's an update, and so that could waste. 20, 25 minutes by the time I get done with that and then I'm always nervous that it's not going to work after I get done but so far so good. So I wanted to show or share with you my solution for um, using the Cricut on an everyday every layout kind of process. Um, I'm sure others have come to the same conclusion but I wanted to share with you how I do it. So first of all, obviously we have tons and tons of cartridges. If you've ever um, purchased a set of paper, a set of paper um, where you get the whole set, where you get the pattern paper, maybe some cardstock, you you will also generally get some sticker sheets or some die cut sheets, and it may look like this. The bottom one is is letters, but this is the one I want to show you, where you have all these different. Um, cuts that you can use. And as I was searching around looking for new things, not only was I thinking about this, but I also found um, it was a little frame where they had layered a couple of die cuts and stitched it. Actually it was from like a studio calico kit and I thought, oh, well that's kind of cute, but I could do that. That's not hard. And so that got me thinking about wouldn't it be nice if I could cut something like this out when I start a project, something that's what I would call generic cuts, things you would use on virtually any layout, and then just have them as I need them. So that is what I did with the Cricut. That's one of the ways I use it. So we're going to look at that way first. So um, what I did is in Cricut Craft Room, and I have shared that file with you inside of the blog. I sat down, it, it did take me some time, probably took me a whole weekend to go through all my cartridges and find every single cut cut that I thought I might want to use. So there are things like arrows, I did a lot of arrows, um, so accent essentials, graphically speaking, I know I have some cuts out of here that I used, um, I did tickets, I did like little recipe card um, pieces. I did a lot of flowers, hearts, and stars because I use a lot of that stuff anyway. 
Um, and then, like, I also did frames, the three by four frames that would fit with project scrapbooking, I, um, or pocket scrapbooking. I also did um, borders, and I can already tell you I probably need to do more borders because I'm using those quite a bit. Uh, I did some labels, I did some negative pieces. So it took me probably a whole weekend to set up the entire file, and I'll show you some of these pieces. So I, this is a negative. Obviously, I have the flower too, and and the negative, and Shirley will tell you, you know, we should keep these and use them as um, like stencils. But I thought it would be pretty just to use it like that too. So um, I have book plates, flowers. Actually, these are the these little diamonds are negatives from this little uh, piece that I made. This is a 3x4 so it would fit really well in the pocket scrapbooking. Uh, these, are, these are one of my favorites, these little Rolodex cards or recipe cards. Little banner pieces, uh, like I said, ticket pieces, just all kinds. I did a ton of arrows because those are so popular right now. So. And then it took me one day to do that and then one day to cut everything I wanted to cut because I, I, what I'm planning on doing is for each album I'm working on creating a, or cutting them out in whatever paper I need for that album. So this one's Christmas because I'm going to show you my Christmas album in a little bit. But I also did one in colors and pattern paper that would work for my... Um, year in review album and then finally I also did a set in white so that I can just color them in whatever color I want to or leave them white this is the little frame that I made but the only thing I didn't do is words which uh, is pretty simple to do I just didn't sit down and do any of them that's my next project uh, if you want even more ideas when it comes to Project Life, of course we have a project DIY Project Life class uh, as well. But I think I came up with four pages of basic cuts that I could cut out. So I spent one day doing that, so I want to show you some of the results from that. This is uh, with the set that I did for... Um, my yearly review album. So this is the tag, a star, and this is one of the little borders that I did. And they're real small. Um, I'm not real adept with the welding function of the Cricut, so I just went with whatever it gave me as far as a border. I need to go back and, and learn how to weld them together so that I can have a longer border. But I kind of like the half border too. Uh, and then the star is as well. Obviously the rest of the um, little journaling spot is, this is a Project Life American Crafts journaling note and then this is just some pattern paper in the background. So uh, that's one way that I used it. And then this is my 2013 Christmas album. And I wanted to show you a couple of pages. This is that little um, tab or uh, Rolodex file. And then this is one of the borders, a longer one, a bigger one. And then over here, the little frame, the star, and this is one of the little borders where I actually, um, I, it was, I didn't have one that was the right color, so I just colored it with some ink. And I did that on here too, this little border. Um, I didn't have the color I wanted, so I used just some blue ink and some brown ink on the ticket stub. Um, so that's kind of how one of the ways that I am able to use the Cricut on a more uh, regular basis and I actually really love doing it this way. I keep whatever album I'm working on, I have a little folder for it, one of these that has little flaps. Um, and I keep the basics of what the pattern paper, not all of it, because I usually have the whole set. And then each album that I create, um, I stay with that same paper set the whole time. And then I'll cut these out, and I also cut them out of regular paper. And one of the things I did that you'll notice in the um, 
cut file is I made sure that there was a separation at about six inches so that I could do the top of the mat one color and the bottom of the mat a different color. If you set it up on your own, what you don't want to do is have to cut them all from the same color or the same pattern paper. So in some cases, best would be um, six by six pieces so that you could really divide up your mat. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Here's your Cricut mat. Here's six by six. six. That way you could fit four different kinds of paper on there and get a good variety. The other thing that I learned is you don't want to do a page that's all arrows because then unless you divide it up six by six, you, they'll all end up the same color and that's no fun. So um, I did a mix of cuts on every single page so that when I cut them out, um, I had a mix of colors and styles and pattern paper. Um, so just a few tips there if you make your own um, cut files. I find, you know, I have them in these little Ziploc bags. I put them in my uh, little project folder there and they're one of the first things I pull out when I start to embellish my layout. So it has worked phenomenally well for me. It was definitely worth the half hour time or the, the weekend time that I put into it. Now eventually I'll probably also do a set of cuts specifically to certain holidays like Halloween or Christmas or birthdays, something that when I'm doing a birthday layout, maybe that has balloons or a cake or, or pumpkins for Halloween that are specific. Now, the other way that I also use my Cricut on a more regular basis is to cut out pages. So you'll notice in my little album here, which I use Bind It All to bind my albums, I have some odd shaped pages. And that is, uh, I cut these out with the Cricut. I actually have a whole drawer, drawer full of them. Not only do I have the page itself, but I have a file for doing um, a layer. So the outside is a shadow and then you have a layer on, on the front. So that um, I can have different size pages in my album. I really like that look. I don't like all my pages to be the same size or the same style so I have some traditional pages here which is just a regular traditional page and then next to it I have um, an interesting cut page so I like to to vary it up that way so that's another way that you can use the Cricut on a more regular basis I can see me using these same cut files on cards I know I'm scrapbooking more right now so that's kind of where I'm going with it but definitely I could see me pulling these out for cards and things like that. So if there are things that you use on a regular basis or if your paper packets come with a set of stickers, this is a great place to start kind of deciding what things you want to cut out and keep. Actually, I really like this scalped frame here. That would be a fun one to do as well. Um, then, you know, take some time, search through your cartridges, find some of those cuts that could be used really on any project that you're doing and then create a cut file that includes all of them or download mine. You may or may not have all the cartridges I do so you might have to do some shifting for things you don't have but um, it's a like I said a great way to use some of those cuts and gosh I, I just scratched the surface of what was possible um, with all the different cuts that I have. So, like I said, I'm sure I'm going to create one that's just borders because I'm using a lot of those and one for words as well. So, if you have any questions about any of this, please let me know and I hope this will encourage you to use your Cricut on a more day on a daily basis. <music>